Hey everybody, welcome to a Coax and Camp Stools build video. We're going to be building the VK3IL pressure paddle. It's a pretty straightforward build. Uh, link's going to be in the description for everything that you're going to need, as well as the instructions. I actually didn't even look at the instructions. Uh, we're going to see that it's three components. You're going to have resistors, capacitors, and MOSFETs. And each one of those components are going to go on a pretty clearly labeled pad here. So R's are going to have resistors, C's capacitors, and those Q1 and Q2 are going to be your MOSFET wire here in the back you're going to have a three conductor wire terminated in a eighth inch jack three and a half millimeter audio jack whatever you want uh, tips going to be dit ring is going to be da and the sleeve is going to be a ground so it's pretty clearly labeled on the paddle itself but it ended up being red wire for dits white wire for ring and black wire for ground well your cable might be different Multimeter is going to be the best friend here in figuring out which one of these pads goes on to your little jack. But I went through there and got it figured out. Sprayed the whole thing with alcohol, wiped it down with some paper towel to make sure there was no oil from the manufacturing left on any of those pads. When you get these from Osh Park, it comes with all these little burrs from the manufacturing process. So I ended up hitting it with some sandpaper. I think that's 220 grit from Home Depot. Three quarter inch. Amazon special wire fly with the glue inside it heat shrink ended up working perfect for this Still playing around with this Flux and I ended up using uh, some spare solder to put rub it around because I forgot to grab Q-tips before I started this wouldn't necessarily recommend that but it worked out I put on these surface mount devices This is all surface mount device is I put a little dollop of solder on each one of the pads And then you'll see me come in here later with some super fine tip tweezers held that surface mount device with one end in that glob of solder and then heated it up, stuck in that one side, and then I came back through afterwards and hit the other side with solder to get both of them attached there. We can see here just how tiny these things are. Like, smaller than a grain of rice. These are the sharpest tweezers I could find and it they still look massive compared to these surface mount devices. can see I have all that flux everywhere. It ended up being a mess. I'm still testing out this flux. It came from a recommendation. And I don't know if I'm too happy with it, but I bought a bottle of it off Amazon. I'm not gonna recommend it because I'm not sure if I want to recommend it, but it ends up working okay. As you can see, I'm about to, about to launch this little device here once I heat it up. These things are super tricky to hold on to. Uh, luckily it ended up a little bit further down the board and I was able to grab it and put it in place. But I held it in place, heated up one side, got the solder on that side attached, and then came back through and hit the other side with solder. And that's what I did for each one of these surface mat devices. So the resistors, the capacitors, and the MOSFETs, I ended up fast forwarding it pretty quick through this because it's the same thing over and over again. You can see this flux just completely covered the board with how I did it. I don't have a overlooking camera, so I have everything tilted towards the camera, and that made the flux run everywhere. It's pretty messy right now. Off camera, I went through and I cleaned up the board and redid these little solder joints, just smoothing them out a little bit more. Uh, we'll see a finished result here at the end of it looking much more presentable. These little circle pads, I didn't talk about it earlier, but these little circle pads are going to have a 3M sticky, and that's the little pressure paddle on them. Um, so you need to make sure that those are very clean. There's no flux underneath it, because that's going to stop those pads from sticking, and they're going to flop around and everything. And took these paddles out on a uh, POTA activation, like 27 contacts in, I think, 45 minutes. Worked pretty well. We'll see how the longevity is. Um, this isn't a review video. I'm just really 
killing time as we're watching this. But they work pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with them. Uh, we see I'm putting the MOSFETs on right here. They scared me before because I'd never worked with a MOSFET before. It was the same exact thing as soldering on any of these other service mount devices. I was a little bit worried about orientation. How the pads are laid out and how these MOSFETs are, there's only one way to put these things on. Like I mentioned, it, it's pretty straightforward. So I went through, I did the same process with these pressure paddle spots. I put a little bit of solder in there. I used the 3M sticky. Oh, this is where that my flux ran. I was worried that it was going to go through those holes and mess with the sticky on the other side. So I quick hit it with some alcohol. Haven't had an issue with it yet. So I think I, I think I saved it. But I put a little bit of solder on the pads. Used the sticky part. Peeled it. There's a little peel and stick. I peeled and then I stuck and then it held it in place. Then I came in with a solder. This is one thing that I don't think it said in the instructions. But I got a little piece of heat shrink with the glue in it and I gave it a little bit of stress relief on that wire so that when I run the zip tie through it, it has something to grab against because if without that there, it's just smooth wire and you really it, it's all squeezing force then, <clears throat> keeping that there. So as I mentioned, uh, we see the picture up in the corner, how this, how this is getting attached and I ended up switching where that ratcheting part of the zip tie is. I ended up putting that on the other side uh, next to the wire. It just made it a little bit less thick, so a little bit thinner profile for it to fit in bags a little bit better. Party trick there, grab with needle nose pliers and twist it and that'll really crank it tight so it's not gonna slip. As I mentioned, came through here, cleaned all that up with Q-tip and some alcohol. Moment of truth, testing it out. You definitely want to test it out before you put heat shrink on there. Once you put that, that glue inside heat shrink on there, it is a mess to take off and fix. My one complaint about these paddles so far is that you can hear it. My fingers are sticking to them. So if you're sweaty or your hands are clammy or anything, the pads of your fingers are going to stick to those pads and I have to figure out a way to get around that, but I don't like how that feels on my hands. Quick overview, after I clean up everything, re-hit some of those solder joints, uh, cleans up pretty nice. We can see that I flipped the zip tie over here on the other side and that that zip tie is grabbing onto that heat shrink with the glue in it and that's what's giving the strain relief because without that heat shrink it's purely squeezing force on that wire and I wouldn't really trust that too much. So how I did this heat shrink was I ended up shrinking the non-pressure paddle side of it to kind of get it to grab a little bit and then I went through and tried to figure out how I could heat shrink this thing without melting those pads and that was the most stressful part of this build. I ended up laying it on there and then I came in and I hit it with a utility knife, the blade from a utility knife, and that actually worked pretty well. Got that heat shrink to shrink on there, grab real nice. And there you have it. I tested it out after the heat shrink, like I mentioned, and it worked pretty pretty well. Alright everybody, thanks for watching.